All right, in my last video, I told you that I had uh, sold a bunch of junk on Craigslist and tools and buying parts to rebuild my CNC router. And this is a spindle and VFD that I bought. I actually found the lowest cost units I could on Amazon. The uh, spindle was $126 and the VFD was $85. So I figured I was going to um, I'd make a video about just kind of firing this thing up and, you know, showing you what a spindle is all about and it came I did have to buy this bracket also I bought the bracket that was another thirty four fifty but um you know basically I'm under two hundred and fifty dollars for the whole setup here with a two point two kilowatt spindle and uh, I will tell you this thing is heavy it's about fifteen pounds there and you know it came with some nice wrenches and it came with a eighth inch quarter inch and a half inch collet to go with it and it's an ER20 thing. And these are some of the other parts that I've been accumulating over the last month and a half, too. So, um, and I'm pretty much ready to go. Uh, and this is a router that I built years ago out of some really lightweight 8020 stuff. And um, it's just the bearings were not made for the kind of use I got maybe about 500 hours out of it the bearings are all starting to go and I wanted to go to a spindle to uh, a water cooled spindle to quiet everything down and the weight of the spindle just would have destroyed this setup here so I decided to uh, try some some of the you know Chinese uh, slides and stuff and the zero backlash lead screws and everything that were really reasonably priced on Amazon so this is going to be my next project, um, and you can see I've got servo motors there that I'll be reusing on it. All the electronics, uh, you know, should be good to go. I got the servos and stuff, and you know, this electronics. I've got a couple of the Gecko servo drives, and um, not quite sure about the stepper on the Z. I might have to do that, redo that. But, um, you know, this definitely has to all be replaced up here on the gantry to to hold the extra weight of that spindle because right now it's you know really a lightweight unit so that's going to be a future project but um, I thought I'd show you a couple of things about this spindle now I chucked the router bit in it and I decided to put an indicator on it and I started with a Chinese indicator and I didn't get any movement in it so I ran out in the shop and I grabbed one of my good little start indicators and no, I'm not getting any run out right on the bit. So that means that this thing actually has a um, a really, uh, it's really concentric in the, the collet and everything else is good. And this is the uh, VFD. It's a little beat up looking. I mean, it's a brand new unit, but you can see where they didn't quite handle it properly at the factory. But, um, you know, for $85, I figured I wanted to try this because... Um, I'm probably going to buy another one of these to put out on my bridge port eventually uh, and get rid of that uh, phasomatic converter thing that I've got. And the wiring is really pretty much straightforward and simple. You remove that little cover. And I had a, um, a plug and I took and cut off an old extension cord here to, to wire it up to 220. And I did put a red piece of tape on that white wire there just to mark so you know it's you know it's hot wire and anytime you see a white wire usually that's a neutral so you want to cover that over a little bit and you just have to follow the wiring directions uh, it's a single phase input and a three phase output so you just hook up the, the two hots there and then the ground and it's all marked pretty well and you know the really nice little manual to show it so I'm just showing a simple hookup and first start up and you know there it is nothing else hooked up I plugged it in and I saw it was set at the um, 400 Hertz for the spindle so you know I figured I'd move on from there then the spindle came with a uh, connector and I use these old extension cords I, I got these things at uh, Walmart on clearance for like two dollars and fifty cents and it's cheaper than buying a piece of wire so I just cut the ends off and use them and um, there's just a little wiring diagram online that I followed you know picture on Amazon so nothing really included with the spindle so I just uh, you know set it up one pins not connected that's a ground um, and there's no connection inside of there and you know usually you don't connect them but once this does go in the uh, the router I'm gonna run a uh, shield around the outside of this wire anyway so and I'll ground that back at the box 
you don't want any ground loops when you're messing with the CNC equipment. So all they have to do, I just had to solder the the three wires onto that connector. And um, I should have got the bigger soldering iron because this one did take a while to heat things up and stuff. But I tried to keep all the little loops short so I didn't have room for heat shrink tubing. So I went back in and I put some uh, high voltage electrical tape around each one just to make sure there couldn't be any shorts or anything. And then it's got a nice strain relief and everything. It all goes back together. And a little set screw holds everything from unscrewing there. So you can see it's really a, a super easy hookup. Now the one problem that I did have is when I uh, soldered the wires in place, I actually you know, wrote down which collar wire went to which pin on that picture that I got off of Amazon. And it turned out that two of the wires had to be reversed um, when I first plugged it in here and fired it up, the motor was actually running in the in the wrong direction. So seeing how it's three phase, you just swap one wire. Now I went with this uh, this 2.2 kilowatt one because it had the ER20 collets also because that will allow me to use half inch bits to uh, for the router. And here you can see I wrote down the wires, but I did have to switch them on the VFD later. So, um, and the water-cooled one actually can run at lower RPM than the air-cooled one. You can get these in air-cooled, but they're almost as noisy as a router, they say. Where this water-cooled one is just, like, extremely silent. I just could not believe. A little bit of vibration from sitting loose on the bench, but, um, you know, nothing there. And there you can see I can start. It starts up uh, and then slowly winds up to what you have it set at. Now this will all be controlled uh, by the software when it's on the router so I won't have to mess with it. And this one does not have an external pot or anything but I, I may just add one to um, to play with anyway. Can't even hear it. But um, I just was so amazed when I, you know, I started running this thing and it runs up to about 24,000 RPM and uh, they say it's safe to run it at down as low as 8,000 RPM for you know long runs. Right now I don't have any water cooling hooked up to it so I'm just gonna you know run it for short spurts to show you. I just wanted to make sure everything worked before I put it away in the box for you know another couple weeks till I get going on this project. And um, it's it's just like having a, a super quiet three horsepower router it's just unbelievable I wish I had uh, tried one of these on my router table I think oh it would have been God. a really good combination so I just you know I just thought I'd uh, you know show you it, it's really fairly simple to get these up and running um, once I start getting into the hooking it into the software end, it's going to take a little changing of the program inside of it but for right now, I just have it set as it comes from the factory to run from uh, like 0 to 400 hertz. And that varies the speed of the, um, the spindle. It's just amazingly quiet oh and smooth, God, though. And it'll be really nice to have a, uh, a router that can do like, you know, really long runs. Um, with the air-cooled ones, they say you have to let them cool down every four hours. With this one, they say there's no limit. You can just, you know, let them run 20 hours if you want. So basically, um, wow. you know, it's, I think this will work out a lot better than the, uh, the old DeWalt router that I was using. And... I had to, you know, I never really let that run much over four hours at a time. And uh, I probably had about 500 hours on that router, that CNC router. So, you know, it really did get my money's worth out of it. And there you can hear the um, DeWalt router at about the same RPM. I, I moved it so it was about the same distance from the camera also. And now I'm going to crank that up to 24K and, um, you know, crank this one up.
and you can see the the difference here um just the the little fan in the vft is actually just as loud as a spindle it's just pretty amazing to me and i can't wait to get this whole setup working together and uh no heat yet uh i know that i don't have the water cooling on it but it looks like you could probably run it for a little while without it so I just thought I'd share this, you know, for anybody that's interested in seeing how these get wired together and, you know, how this one actually works. Like I said, this is a, um, a really low cost unit and um, doesn't have the pot on it, stuff like that, but I really don't need it. So, you know, I'm, I'm real happy so far. And you can actually remove this panel and put a ribbon cable in there and run it like 25 feet away if you want to, to have the control panel accessible. Now I have no idea how long this thing will run or last or anything else, but so far I'm really happy with it. Uh, and there, you, uh, this thing is heavy. It's like 15 pounds with the bracket there. But uh, there you can see the two hookups where the water will get um, hooked up to for cooling it internally. And uh, you just use a constant flow of water and I'm going to put a five gallon bucket in. So I just thought I'd break out a video about this now and you know there'll probably be plenty more uh, videos about it as things get going. Time for some more change for the better in my shop. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.